everyone, welcome to my channel, Draw, Eat, Love, Repeat. My name is Rashida Lin, and today we're going to talk about an art block again. <laughs> so this video is more like a part two. Um, as I promised in my previous video um, that I was talking about how to overcome your art block, how to solve the art block, and at the end of the video, I did promise you guys that I want to um, try to give a more practical methods that could help you uh, solve your art block. Alright, so in that video, we kind of learned how to set the feelings aside, how to deal with the negativity. So um, if you haven't watched that video yet, I really really recommend you to do so. Um, the link is over here, it's in my description box below. So. Um, to go take a look at that video and now that the um, I assume that you have already set that feelings uh, aside you know negative feeling aside then in this video we're going to focus on some of the practical methods practical things that we can um, easily employ to overcome an up block in an easy to follow easy to do way these are all the tips that I personally use myself. I'm not sure if it will um, work for you guys, but it definitely works for me. So if the, um, this video is helpful to you guys in some way, then that will make me very, very happy. So um, without further ado, let's get started. First tip that I use is to set a schedule. Yes, setting a schedule setting some time aside for your artwork and stick to it make a deadline for yourself and follow it through to the end all right that's tip number one so let me elaborate it more okay this is kind of like uh, you putting a limit or a goal on yourself that uh, you can work towards so um, if you kind of just like uh, Oh hey, I'm gonna uh, maybe I draw something, but you didn't set a concrete goal or a set timeline for yourself. You might, um, you know, take too long. You might uh, kind of procrastinate, and um, you know, uh, taking weeks or months to uh, to do the project because uh, there's no deadline given for the project. So. Um, as for myself, whenever I start something, like um, I will say, okay, I'm going to draw this artwork, all right, and I'm gonna set aside maybe, um, okay, within, um, it depends on the scope. So let's say uh, it's a pretty complicated artwork. Uh, let's say I'm gonna spend, uh, set aside three to four days to finish this artwork, okay? Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my um, to do list app or calendar app or anything that you want to use uh, basically anything at all I, I'm going to just write it down that okay I have this uh, this project I'm gonna draw an artwork it's gonna be done by this day so that's it so afterward I work myself um, towards that goal so I'm doing everything to the best of my ability to finish the artwork within that time so uh, I find it that uh, when I set a timeline for myself it's uh, easier for me to follow through it and I know that okay I cannot really uh, slack off or um, there's no way around it uh, I can't um, <laughs> even though uh, I might tell myself oh gosh I didn't I don't have a good enough idea for this but if you set a deadline you kind of mentally uh, telling yourself that okay, it doesn't matter. I cannot lounging around forever. I can't think too long. I have to finish doing this, this, this within today. If not, then I wouldn't be able to finish the artwork in time for my deadline. So that's um, how I do it. So I hope um, that uh, you guys can use these tips to uh, apply to your own project as well. So I want you to make um, creating and drawing kind of like a habit or um, a routine. I guess routine has the kind of <laughs> a negative uh, uh, kick to it but what I'm trying to say is that uh, I want you to set a schedule 
and stick to it. Uh, you set aside some time every week. Um, it depends on um, where you are in your life, but how much free time you have. Are you working for yourself? Is art your full time job or is it a hobby that you want to kind of push it further? So set aside the time that you have every week, every day. Um, I'm not sure some of you guys uh, have that that kind of time to do it every day, but the, if you can, then go for it. Uh, set aside some time. It doesn't matter how much you set the time for, but set aside some time and stick to it. Make it a habit and be tough on yourself. Okay? Be tough on yourself about the time. Like, you make a promise to yourself that you're gonna draw today you're going to do it. You can't say no to that, all right? Unless there's an emergency coming up, life and death, threatening emergency. It's not just like, oh my God, I feel lazy today. Don't do that. You have to stick to it, all right? Be tough on your schedule, but okay, I want to elaborate a little bit. I want you to be tough on your schedule, but if you spend, uh, you stick to your schedule, you spend a few hours drawing and you know like you complete your clock in your time for that day and at the end of it you felt that your artwork looks terrible. <laughs> you you felt that it wasn't the artwork is not good enough, it's um, not up to what you wanted to do. It's, um, at that moment I want you guys to be gentle on yourself the most important thing is that you have stick to the schedule you see it through to the end and that's not a lot of people can do that I have to say being disciplined is hard you have given in your time the result may not be up to what you have hoped for but don't worry about it be gentle be gentle about the result all right Give it more time and you see your result will keep improving, your drawing will be better and better. Um, what I want to say is stick to your schedule. Doesn't matter if your eyeball looks bad, stick to the schedule, keep drawing. Yes, that's my tips for you. A bonus tip, so um, if you kind of like, um, you know what Rashta, I mean, I kind of set a schedule for my artwork, but seriously, it's just so, um, today I don't feel like working, uh, I mean, uh, drawing, uh, you know, it can be boring sometimes, and I get it, I get it, I get what you're saying. <laughs> when you're working on something for too long, sometimes it can become, you know, you have that moment to yourself that, oh man, I really don't want to do this today, but remember what I said? It still, you have to be tough on your schedule. Doesn't matter if you're bored. Doesn't matter if you're feeling lazy that day. Please, please, please. You gotta stick to it. Um, although I kind of um, prevent that feeling by setting some fun activities that I can do while drawing. <laughs> So you're asking me, um, Rashna, can you, how can you do two things at the same time? So what I'm saying is that I usually set, uh, you know, set aside some fun things that I would love to do, uh, like uh, listening to uh, my favorite music or um, watching anime or that favorite, uh, my favorite TV show, um, doing at the same time that I'm drawing so it's not like um so you know it's not that boring <laughs> so I uh, sometimes it's like I have this kind of mental uh, thinking mentally looking forward to drawing mentally because I was like oh my gosh um, I could get back to my drawing again and continue watching that show I left off yesterday um the trick to it though is that uh, you still gotta draw okay you're still going to draw. You can't um, draw 20% um, of the time and spend 80% of your time watching shows. 
All right, that's the trick. So uh, okay, as for me, I usually rewatch uh, my old, sh uh, some old shows, my old favorite, the one that I already watched. So I kind of already know the the story. So I kind of rewatch it again to, um, you know, to kind of like having some fun and, you know. It's not too distracting. <laughs> Watching a new interesting show is too distracting for me. So yeah, that's another bonus tip that I have for you guys to spice your working hours a little bit. <laughs> so okay, what if you have already clocked in your time and you're sitting at your table in front of the paper or um, your Wacom iPad or whatever tools that you chose <laughs> to use for your art and you're still like oh no Rashda I mean I'm already here in front of my paper and still I can't draw anything there's nothing coming to my head and what am I going to do what am I gonna do in this situation so um okay then that's is the second tip for you guys <laughs> so um, sometimes what I do when I can't find a good enough idea to draw or I feel a little bit stuck on my creativity and not super um, you know my brain was a little bit dead that day <laughs> but um, sometimes what I usually do is to default to what I usually do default to my comfort zone basically so what does it mean so that's the second tip default to something that you usually do that you're good at all right which mean um, let's think about something that you know you definitely know you can draw okay something that you're comfortable enough the subject that you are very confident of you join it a lot of times and you know that okay I definitely know how to do this I know how to draw this as for me is the female portrait <laughs> all right to me that kind of subject is the um, female character portrait uh, from the waist up um, this particular angle is the basically my comfort zone my ultimate com comfort zone drawing so um, when let's say uh, I want um, starting uh, my project and I don't know what to do yet I'll just start sketching and warming up myself it doesn't need to be uh, something amazing it's just you know like you're warming up you just draw something to kind of um, you know, uh, kind of small practice or getting yourself into the zone, into the group. So uh, that's what I do. I'll start sketching something that I know very well that I know I can do. So I start drawing the face of a girl. Okay, it's a generic female face. And after that, then it'll be like, uh, I'll just start um, drawing the torso and, you know, drawing the hair. It's, it might not look that great, you know, we're talking about warming up comfort zone here, but at least it gets you drawing and it gets you to do something and after a while you feel like, hmm, okay, uh, we can do this and that kind of feeling, uh, I feel that that positive feeling of you um, getting into the, you know, getting used to your hand moving and I think that will help, um, how to say, like, boost your confidence <laughs> I'm not sure um, when when you start drawing I find that it's easier to continue drawing even more so um, that's what I do when I have no have um, when I have no idea whatsoever I just start sketching my um, uh, female character my comfort zone um, kind of subject <laughs> then after that, uh, I'll just kind of moving on from this basic sketch. Uh, maybe I'll try to, uh, if it turns out to be a nice sketch, uh, maybe I'll try to add something to it. Or um, I would think a uh, scenario for the character like, hmm, okay, maybe this pose is a little bit too boring. 
Uh, how can I make it more dynamic than in the subsequent sketch? I'll sketch something new, maybe based on the first sketch that I have, and maybe try to make it more interesting. Then I think about um, you know, branching out to lighting, uh, to um, background ideas, and so on and so on and so on. All right, all started from that simple sketch. So that's my second tips to you. When all else fails, um, just draw your comfort zone. <laughs> all right, draw something you know well, and you can branch out from there. Or if you, um, you don't want to, at least it gets you to draw something. And getting started, um, is the hardest part in my opinion. So, um, the goal is to get you to start drawing. So, that's how to overcome our block. So I hope that this second tips is helpful to you. Which leads us to the third tip. So um, in this third tip, we are doing something totally different from the second tip. It's like uh, 180 degree angle. <laughs> what if, you know what, the um, comfort zone and all that is good, but it's getting a little bit, you know, old. Don't you think? Like um, sometimes you're just like, oh no way. I mean, how many times I've already drawn this? It's just getting sick of it. And you know what? Let's just try something new today. So that's the third tip. Do something totally different than what you have done before. So yes. <laughs> do something you don't usually do. Try something. Go crazy for it. Uh, this tip is especially helpful if you have been drawing the same thing a lot, uh, you know, for a long time. Um, you have stick to this project. You just drawing goes over and over and over again. And as for me, sometimes you know, like I mean, girls are nice, but I love drawing girls. But you know what? I mean, if I have drawn like ten girls already in a row, uh, sometimes something totally different, like maybe a male character. Or maybe I just want to draw something that is, you know, what the focus on the composition of the, or the, you know, the story of the character in, instead of just, you know, like the, the character in it. This is serve to kind of spice things up and break yourself up of a monotony of things. <laughs> so yeah, um, try something totally different and. The most important thing, don't be afraid to fail. Remember, the goal of this tip is to just basically get you kind of out of that uh, monotonous uh, feeling. And you know, um, you have stick to something for too long, you just gotta freshen it up and you know, uh, get back to drawing, feeling refreshed again. So try something, go crazy. Um, Look up something on the internet, try some challenge. Um, let's say you have never drawn the, this particular, uh, you know, like subject before. Like let's say you want to draw a monster today because I have never really um, drawn monsters uh, that much. So yeah, why not? Let's just do that. Let's do something crazy and fun for yourself or have this kind of idea that I have in my head for so long, I have never really gotten a chance to do it or have never really have a confidence to do it, it's something challenging. Give yourself a try, I mean go crazy. Alright, just do it, just have fun. <laughs> you learn something um, from it and find that this kind of project helps you learn a lot because uh, you have tried something they have never done before. Um, so. Uh, you know, I find that at the end of this kind of challenge, um, I usually come out learning a lot of stuff from it. So it's very useful um, from uh, spicing up your creative routine and it's a good way to break out that kind of up block, blockish kind of feeling in your mind. So yep, that's tip number three for you. So another tip that I want to give you is um, have more than one project at a time. So you have something, okay, let's say uh, you are kind of like um, working on this project and you know what, it's like um, 
it's starting to get a little bit, uh, you know, stuck. You you feel a little bit stuck on it, or you um you have been kind of um, you know, have feeling a bit tired mentally. Have been working on this project forever, and uh, I mean, I just want to take a break or something. But you still have to keep to your schedule. So what you gonna do? So another way that you can go around this feeling is that you switch project. Basically, you okay? Uh, maybe today I'm not feeling like doing this project today. I'm going to go to my secondary or other project and work on that instead. So yeah, it's kind of like um, you still being productive. All right, it keeps you staying productive and not the um, you know. You're still creating something, but now you're creating something new. So after you have worked on that project for a while, you're feeling a little bit better uh, because that project feels a bit more fresh and fun to you. And maybe the next day, or um, you know, after a couple of hours on that project, you can come back to your current artwork again and feeling more energized to do it. So, but watch out though that you don't do this. To the point that you have started a whole bunch of projects that you have never completed. So <laughs> the goal is to have enough project to keep things interesting, but not too much that you can finish anything. So uh, look out for that, and that's my four tip for you. <laughs> so moving on to the next tip. Um, okay, let's say uh, you have tried all um, all the tips that have given you already, and um, you know it's still not really working. You still feel that kind of blockage. The idea, kind of um, of an artwork or whatever, it just doesn't come to you. Okay, the idea doesn't come to you, and you feel like, oh my god, I'm rushed out. What am I gonna do? Ugh. Man, this is so hard. I can't find good enough ideas for me to write or not write to draw. <laughs> so um, another advice I can give you is to fall back on the foundations, the art fundamentals. So uh, what do I mean when I say art fundamentals? It means the basic stuff. You know, it's something. Like um, the elements, you have to define it uh, roughly. Uh, it's uh, the elements, the factors that contribute to make an artwork look aesthetically pleasing. So, um, let's say theoretically speaking, if your artwork has good composition, good lighting, good anatomy. Then, that artworks will at least be pleasing to the eyes, all right. Um, the subject of the hour, okay, might not um be very creative or interesting, but at least it looks good. So um, when you cannot come up with the idea, what you can do is to just fall back on your knowledge of the art fundamentals, right? So you. You kind of like okay, um, I may not have good idea, but at least I know that it's that hour is gonna look good in some way. It might not be my best ever piece of artwork, but at least it looks good. Okay, so <laughs> well, this require you to at least know something about the art fundamentals. So uh, if you're just starting out as an artist so you might this tip might not sound very helpful to you um, so in that case if your fundamentals are not very strong yet then don't worry about it okay I mean have been there so, and, uh, <laughs> I, and I'm not the uh, my art skill is not great uh, I'm not starting I mean at the beginning it wasn't that amazing so I understand what you what you're feeling so in that case for you guys um you can do studies instead um something like do a bunch of studies looking through reference photos online um you can or you can even observe some of the artist works that you like and basically study uh, do some study on it um try to uh 
is a clear drawing, um, still life, or trying to uh, you look at a photograph of a person that you find interesting, and you just try to um, do some observational drawing based on that, or um, you have uh, this piece of artwork from this. Uh, artists that you really, really like a lot, then you just kind of you know spend your day or spend the time reverse engineer the artwork. All right, if it's the purpose uh, for studying, then I think it's fine. You're not really copying anything; just for your eyes only. So yeah, I mean that's my fifth tip for you. So either fall back on your knowledge of fundamentals or do some studies, and you know. You never know you will get you might get inspired from the study and the most important thing is it's also useful because you get to learn something at the end of you know that drawing session. So it's the win win. <laughs> I guess <that. laughs> So I have mentioned uh, five total tips already and I hope those are helpful to you. But then, uh, okay, if you, um, you know, have followed through everything and you're still feeling um, uh, tired and burnout, out and, you know, um, you can check that feelings out and you're just feeling completely drained emotionally and mentally and just running out of ideas, uh, ask yourself one thing, okay? Um, ask yourself one thing, how have you... You know, taken a break recently. <laughs> like, have you been working too hard? Uh, you have um, spent too much of your time uh, working on your project, and now you're left feeling totally, totally drained, burnout, and fatigue. So, um, you know, that sometimes happens when the you know you're very hard working. <laughs> so. Okay, I have to congratulate you on that. But sometimes you just have to know um, how to tell yourself to stop taking a break and just step out of the you know of your artwork and you know take a rest. All right, <laughs> take a rest. I know that from the beginning of the video, I told you to be tough on yourself, tough on the schedule. But um, I also don't want to. You to work yourself to the point that you feeling like um, you know it's it's getting too much, all right. Um, I used to do that, <laughs> and I think what well, last year uh, I was guilty of that. I kind of like there is this period of time that I would spend all my time work working and drawing. It was like you know what I mean. Uh, and really really want to uh, create artwork as much as possible then I was just drawing drawing every day I just wake up and uh, start drawing then I eat something then I drawing um, draw 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 then I just uh, go to bed and uh, the process will repeat itself for quite some time and I find that okay. At first, I felt all right. I was like, "Oh my god, I have achieved so much. Um, I was so productive." But then, um, you know, when that keeps going, you kind of um, I gradually develop this feeling that the uh, you know, it's gaining too much, and I start to feel very sick of everything. And I'm like, you know what? This uh, and it kind of hurts me. In a bad way, like um, my creativity kind of suffer a little bit at the end, and um, you know the people around me um, did didn't really appreciate it because I didn't spend enough time with them. <laughs> so um, nowadays I try not to do that anymore. I don't do that anymore. So I always at least allocate some time for myself, um, at least one two days a week. For me, it's totally uh, do nothing related to art. So um, it could be my other hobby. I could uh, um, do, you know, like spend my time on uh, my other hobby, like Japanese cooking, or just go out, um, explore uh, my neighborhood, and have some fun, uh, hanging out with my friends, those kind of thing. And you know what? It's just like. Um, because art, art, or any creative, um, creative 
any creative process, like I work on writing, is I feel it's kind of a cumulative、um, result of your life experience. So in a way, your art work is kind of a reflection of your life. <laughs> Does it sound too deep? <laughs> Sorry.、Um, wow. Okay, I'm pretty impressed with myself. Anyway, okay. Feel that artwork is a reflection of your life experience. So、um, I feel that、uh, it kind of use that as a fuel.、Um, you、uh, learn something from your everyday life, and you kind of process it in your mind, and it just kind of come out as an artwork. All right. So、uh, sometimes when you keep、um, churning in, churning out the output, the artwork over and over again,、um, without taking any、uh, thing in, without without spending time to take new things in, without experiencing life,、um, sometimes I feel that、like、it's just going to make your artwork look kind of stale. You run out of ideas because you're running on the Limited fuel. You didn't go out and experience life enough. So、uh, don't forget to allocate some time for yourself to go out and have some fun. I mean,、um, I know I was saying that you should oh be disciplined, work, 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 and stuff. But it doesn't mean that you have to work all the time and <laughs> balance it out.、Um, all right, the go out experience life, and I feel that the, that. Um, kind of,、uh, you have a good rest. You, it will serve as a fuel for you、uh, to your creativity, and you come back from the rest, and your hours gonna be fresh and you know great all over again. <laughs> so、uh, that's my last tip to you, and I hope that this video has been helpful to you in solving your. Art blog. I hope that the tips are practical enough for you to follow through.、Um, if you have any suggestion、um, or any ideas or any comments,、um, you can, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you guys. And thank you, thank you so much for watching my video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more video like this in the future. I hope to see you again. In the next one, all right. In the meantime, stay creative and bye bye. <laughs>